part three to the triple ticket, other parts down below. I had to contact her, she was threatening to get solicitors back involved in our separation agreements and I am about to sign up for the house for me and my boys, so it was a preventative measure. First phone call to her in over six weeks. I hate the drama and she is welcome to it and him. Last thing I need is her thinking I validate anything she's done. Mid-May, this is all over, the only comms is about the kids and even then, I expect that to be minimal. What a difficult few days. I'm stuck in grieving for what might have been, the loss of one family unit, since I had kids, this is all I focused in on for life. The boys were my life and now they are barely half of it and this situation is nothing I'd ever consider being acceptable. What triggers it, is when have my boys. In the joint calendar, used to arrange childcare to avoid comms, 9 out of 10 when I have them it is written STBX and available, and I know this means she is away. Staying in nice hotel and shagging the OM I know I shouldn't care but I can't cope. The mind movers haunt me. As positive steps, I have just forced me to stop snooping at her Facebook. By removing the device from the safe list and even further I have actually unfriended the STBX and given the number of photos of my boys on her wall, this was a very tough decision. It's three months tomorrow since D-Day but today, it felt as fresh as it ever has and I given I have at least 14 years of co-parenting with this piece of crap. I cannot see how I'm going to cope. Still tough today but great to wake up with my sons here and playing so nicely in, what we now call, the boys house. Great not to be tempted to look at FB, what she is doing and saying. Real positive move that and can't believe I didn't do it earlier. She moved out in Jan, took most of her stuff but that very day I returned, I went round every single nook and cranny and made sure every single trace of her was gone. The only thing is a box that is full of all the wedding day stuff, and both of our wedding, engagement rings, as she left them on the side the day she moved out. Still undecided what to do about all of that but it's well out of sight, mind. I think it is in my nature to be fairly in control, not controlling, but wanting all of the information and facts before acting, so that is a change to be made but not necessarily a bad one. I guess I am just aware that a mother and son bond is so important, he will get all of what you said from me, and I genuinely appreciate the reminder of my responsibilities, but I still believe that bond is vital. I just want the best for them long term. I'm very confident that when they are older, they will settle with me but for now, consistency and doing what is expected seems best. We are down to minimum possible comms that co-parents of two small boys can possibly be and I do feel the benefit of that. I don't want her back, I know I am better off without her, I just fall back into the old life dreams but I will make a list of new dreams, 15 in 4 months, Chuck. Okay, we'll try. After a little time out, I think I need to be kinder to myself, life changing event, only 3 months in, I think things are as good as they can be. I do find it a little difficult to get the balance of projecting my feelings on the boys, making sure they are comfortable sharing their emotion, but I will get there, no doubt with a few mistakes along the way. I actually contacted her two weeks ago, spent two hours on the phone learning she knew about them, OM obsession with my STBX long before I did and had lunch on Sunday with her, to get all the facts. Given what I learnt my STBX and OM need all the luck in the world for it to work, that said, they are probably well suited. I knew this week was going too smoothly. What can I do about this? This is strictly against what I asked for during mediation. Hi, just to let you know, this Sunday I am taking the boys on the steam miniature railway. They've been excited about it for weeks, but it doesn't open until this weekend. Hopefully they won't love it so much they demand to go every time they come to stay. I would like to invite OM to join us on the train, to introduce the boys to him, as it would be away from the house, for a limited period of time and while doing a specific activity I thought it could be a good introduction for them and more acceptable for you. My thoughts are that meeting where something else, like the train journey, is the focus makes it easier all round, and helps put a face to the name for the boys. Please let me know if you're okay with this. Thanks, STBX. There was an agreement in the mediation but this wasn't, it was never allowed, expected, to be part of the legal consent order that is still awaiting stamping due to awaiting court dates, pronouncements. So, it was a verbal agreement of me to 1, not tell her work 2, communicate about the boys 3, tell he how I found out about the affair and in return, I asked for 1, that he is not introduced before the divorce date. My solicitor is aware of the situation and is awaiting pronouncement. 31st of March, before challenging her response of no, she does not intend to cohabit in the next six months. Well, I responded by saying no, it's not okay, reminded her of our agreement, told her this is about what is best for my boys, not us. Also mentioned I had no plans to introduce anyone, and that what I know about OM from OMW, he isn't suitable to meet then until after she is a divorced woman. Mentioned a small walk is more appropriate than a day out, anyway. She replied just saying fine, I wanted to revisit. I understand where you are, her stock answer for everything, and she will stick to our agreement. M. Subplot, because I texted the OMW about this, she offered up him to see his kids on Sunday, which he jumped at, so in the end he couldn't have come to see mine anyway. Good, unified teamwork. We'll see STBX at my son's karate grading in a few hours, just going to blank her. She got me so angry yesterday but I didn't, won't show it. 
Just another bump in the road to freedom, I guess. So, sat opposite side of the hall at my son's karate grating. Boys ran back and forth to me. X looked haggard and very, very stressed. I was cheerful and supportive of my amazing son. At end she tried to engage me in small talk, then remarking how she liked my new shoes. I uh -huh back to her, hugged sons and left. Drove to a mate's with volume on max, smiling and singing at top of my voice. At a low Sunday evening, went on my own, just disappointment on how life turned out so far and for my boys but managed to regain positivity about the future. However, today I signed up for some CBT sessions. I want to be in tip-top condition for my sons and any potential future GF and see no harm in utilizing what I can right now. OMW texted tonight, here is what she forwarded to me, to her from the OM after he spent rare day with his kids. He is also trying to get his wife to tell his kids that they must meet my STBX. They don't want to. So, ladies and gentlemen, an insight into the world of the WS. For clarity, this is a text from OM to his wife. Hi, I know it's all too late, but I wanted to say I'm sorry. Spending the day here has given me just a tiny insight into the nightmare that you've had to deal with compounded by my selfish and unforgivable behavior. I'm so sorry on so many fronts. I can't quite believe what I've done to the children, or you, and I hope that they may be able to forgive me in time. I can't really begin to imagine how difficult it's been and I understand totally why you have reacted to me as you have. It's all too little too late, I know, but I truly am sorry. I hope you're enjoying your time away. Bye and see you tomorrow. Reality has been biting them for weeks now. I know my STBX wants him involved because 1. She wants him to integrate into her life for security, because she is afraid that he might cheat, no crap. Divided by go back to his wife, he wishes. Divided by run away, very possible when he gets his new job. And 2. She cannot cope with my boys on her own, while trying to impress people at her work by doing 60 hours weeks, just in case anyone finds out about her affair with her boss and questions whether she deserved that massive promotion. Fun to watch. But no, I will not be entertaining her advances now, or in the future. Yes, I could do with a woman's touch right now but I am far too busy building myself back up, beyond where I was, to be interested in quick fixes. Tempting to play games with her when it comes but I above that now and, honestly, as much fun as it is to watch all this, I do hope she disappears without a trace and can co-parent with the smallest possible amount of comms. That is unlikely, as every child-based text, email, has some kind of personal, work-related update within it, I don't care. There is a large part of validation to this too. Deep down she still trusts my judgment, so she wants me to okay the relationship from an emotional as well as logical POV. Well, it isn't going to happen. I have no interest in meeting him. I have learned enough about him from the OBW and that is all I need to know. The STBX knows that, after D, if I get the slightest inkling that he isn't throwing straight dice around my boys, I go to the police. I've identified a strange trigger today, despite the fact that the OM is her boss, so they see each other every day. When I pick up my boys I know it frees her to go and continue her affair without the chains of being a mother. That gets me angry. The fact she can just hand over S7 and S4 to me, go off and have fun with her bald, old boss makes me mad. As you know, I've stopped pain shopping by no longer FB snooping, so I don't want to know what they are doing but it still riles me. I've also noticed me getting a little impatient with S4, as he tends to call me mummy by accident a lot and often ask when he is going back to stay with her. He is so young, so clearly know I need to give him plenty of understanding at this uncertain time but I do sometimes project that disappointment onto him by getting snappy. I know I can only control the way I react to knowing what she is doing. Feeling nothing is the aim. Pain is still, unfortunately, the game. So, I slowly read each statement and answered. It stings. The boys don't see the impact, yet, because he isn't around, yet. I will revisit dating again, one will turn into LTR eventually. I have already met many of my goals, being accepted for a week's charity work in June being a major one. No hesitation, no, 99% sure she wouldn't do it for the money. Why? Cause her dad abandoned her when she was 8 and she wants her boys to see 50% of their father, and so she can cake eat. Mind you, D-Day minus 7, I was 99% sure she wasn't the type of women to have an affair, so what do I know? Arranging Mother's Day plans she emailed saying the kids are my priority too. I replied saying I hope future correspondence and actions reflect that. She also mentioned some tall stories my older son was telling. I got the cheap shot in by saying it's a shame he appears to have picked up her skills in lying. Dropped boys off for Mother's Day and thought I would be the better man and buy some flowers for the boys to give her. Didn't even acknowledge the gift and within 10 minutes of me driving away, she was calling asking why youngest spots has, which he had when she dropped them off Friday. Agreed, bad picker and am working each day on self-awareness. CBT starts on Saturday. Thanks for scheduling advice. 
We mostly do Friday to Friday, so I asked to see them for dinner each Monday a few weeks ago but overnight nice idea too. Sigh, still some way to go for me. This is probably going to split opinion but given she is, after all, the mother of my young kids and realistically needs to function at some level for the next 10 years, until they decide where they want to live, is there any benefit to sitting back and letting it all go to crap? I mean, I know what the OM is really like, a guy who abuses his position to prey on women. Five known cases from his ex, likely many, many more. Okay, the STBX screwed up too, she is a cheat, but she isn't anywhere near his level of serial cheating. She just fell for his grooming, she doesn't realize this, she sees him as a soulmate. Doesn't she deserve to know? She will have a breakdown when he cheats on her and, as the mother of my boys, I fear for her sanity and the impact on the boys when they are with her. Even if she stays with him and doesn't discover his cheating, he will still be around my boys, bringing them up with a lack of morals and teaching them being a cheating rat pays. Okay, some will say, not my monkeys. But it is, this is the development of my sons at risk here. He might screw off soon, even more reason to not have him appear around the boys to suddenly disappear again. Can't have that being seen as normal by my sons. I am still playing the typical fixer role, I know but that is what comes with being a dad. I've made it clear, I don't want her back, we are incompatible, I could never think about touching her again, let alone anything else. I like the differing views on here but each situation has its own merits and a broad brush cannot be used for every case of infidelity. In this case, I have two very young children I have to consider, by using all the information I have to hand and assessing what I can control that will be in their best interests. What we could do is let one son go and stay with her and OM, whereas the other one can stay with me. Then we can see in 15 to 30 to 45 years time, who was right, hey. I can see that it is controlling and that is something I am more than willing to work on. The fine line between caring and controlling, I find it difficult. I think my controlling nature started when I became dad, lots of responsibility and the boys have to do what they are told to stay alive. My mum is seen as a very caring person, always putting others first but I was aware, from my teens, that she was in fact controlling and so I distanced myself from her and we had a tough relationship until after I moved out properly, in my early 20s. I know the STBX will just see it all as lies, after all this the man who tells her being with you for the next 50 years wouldn't be long enough and she laps it up. As the OM said before to his wife, they are convinced I am just out to cause maximum damage to them. I guess it is time to give up, give in to them. If she thinks him meeting the kids is a good thing, then who am I to disagree? Let them eat cake. I am potentially six weeks and a day away from absolute divorce. That would be exactly five months since D-Day. Of course, as petitioner, that is now in my hands and can only be triggered by the STBX in 22 weeks' time. The OM just texted me. I told STBX, a couple of weeks ago when she tried to force him to meet my boys, that any attempt from her to change the verbal mediation agreement we had about him not being involved until after divorce would result in me breaking my side of the agreement, namely telling their work about their affair. So, when my boys told me yesterday that he brought his kids' old toys to the house for them to play with, he wasn't there, so still hasn't met them, I lost it with X and told her that was it. She is forcing his presence on them and I was telling her work HR she pleaded with me not to and I'm guessing that got him rattled too. He says, the toy gesture wasn't malicious, but perhaps in hindsight not very thoughtful in the wider context. Assuming that you will consider it at the appropriate juncture, I am content that I do not meet your children until you give your approval. It would be useful to meet to chat. Don't worry, I'm not replying and I won't be meeting him or giving my approval. The OMW has offered to speak to my STBX, to tell her what her husband is really like but is discussed here in depth. I agree, it won't change a thing, they are in Lala land. You don't realize how different things are with him. Asked my solicitor today if OM and or STBX losing their jobs would impact the financial settlement at this stage. He suggested, as they are both still of good age and employable, a court would see no reason to change the terms. So, I suggested to OMW that we turn up to their work next week. She completes on new house funded by OM then and blow it wide open. She wrote back saying we should take our four kids with us, so everyone will see. It's all in jest but very tempting. However, I think I'm leaning towards letting her find out the hard way, what impact all of this is going to have on her life. The OBS is very nervous about exposure, partly because he is paying the mortgage on her and kids' new house, their school fees and is actually not willing to get divorced, shock, horror, but rather sit out the two years of separation, some BS excuse about it being cheaper. I've told her that is crap and he is keeping her as plan B, an exit plan. Told her to divorce on unreasonable behavior and get clean breakthrough mediation, with mortgage, school payments in it. She is stalling. I believe her when she says she doesn't want him back but he's been so controlling, there is that word again, over finances, that she is scared. I've reassured her he'll have to keep paying the mortgage by hook or crook, else his credit is buggered for life. School fees. Nah, never been one for private schools myself but that is tough on her kids, I agree. Likelihood is that he will have another job before June, apparently, he has been looking since he hooked up with my ex in October. 
Not many CIO jobs around here though, hence the proposed move north that I mentioned a few weeks ago. Off to a whiskey show and gig in London tomorrow. Needed after a week with two sick kids. Youngest has chicken pox, never rains but it pours. Well, the STBX has always maintained that she was always going to end our marriage and that she wasn't leaving me for the OM. This is because she told me she was unhappy and we are better off apart, albeit after their affair moved from EA to PA. So even if it all goes tits up, in her mind this is for the best and you know what? She's right. Yes, I know she is protecting her reputation, what's left of it, in case it doesn't work out with him but I doubt very much she will come crawling back. I know she was searching for all of her ex-boyfriends and friends a while back. Either way, she knows it's over, I've driven this divorce process on my own and continue to push it, without arousing her suspicions about why I want it done so quickly, so she knows she has zero chance of getting me back. Plus, she thinks I have a GF, OBW told OM this is a little game playing and he passed this on to X, so that is another thing to hold her back. Positive today, long may it continue. Update, off on holiday with my boys next week after a horrendous spell where S4 had chicken pox, S7 had sick bug and now I've got tonsillitis. Fingers crossed we all get some good health soon. On divorce, Missy pronounced and I've signed the consent order, the financial agreement for the judge to seal. STBX has documents for her to sign, so should be entered to court next week. Pretty much home and dry if judge doesn't object. I understand that OM is off to meet mother-in-law and ex's aunt while I'm away. I've spoken to them both and both seem to think this was just something that happened. Question is, I have my correction of history letter waiting to go, nothing too emotional, just my disappointment at chain of events, asking for understanding about how our future relationship cannot be the same after this but hoping they support my sons more than ever. There is a timeline of events and one version that includes some screenshots of the damning texts. At this stage, do you think it's important to send that email to mother-in-law before OM meets them and rewrites history further or should I just let it go and forget about the truth? The final divorce is not certain but it would be an incredible turn from where we are if that were to change. She tells friends she's never felt love like it, that brings innate peace, so pretty sure the bubble is intact. The final divorce is not certain but it would be an incredible turn from where we are if that were to change. She tells friends she's never felt love like it, that brings innate peace, so pretty sure the bubble is intact. I doubt an email to her mum will rock that boat. My intention is for people to see what really happened what she is like but, because of my boys, what OM is really like, before he gets in front of them and starts spouting his crap song the lines of he is aggressive and I have come to save and protect her this is what he told his wife. I am still at war to ensure he never meets my boys and this feels any important opportunity to influence that. The letter is balanced but makes it clear all I do, say and ask is for the sake of the boys. It's a tricky one. This will be the first meet with him so I see it as a one-time opportunity to reinforce what really happened. So they have an opinion formed when they first meet him, before he turns on the sleazy cheater charm that seems to have got him so far in previous affairs. There are two sides to every story. OM could, should have been a friend of the marriage but broke it in my kid's home. Boys are priority, please support and look out for them. My aggravation over affair, ex lack of respect and he disregard for marriage, her boys. Making it clear OM has wife and kids who are in same position. It is painful but boys are my priority and I won't let it affect them. Then a timeline of dates and facts to make it clear that there was an overlap, which the ex maintains there wasn't, still makes me mad every time I hear that. Ends thanking her for her love and support and making it clear things cannot be the same between us, so all the best but keep an eye out for boys. As with all of these decisions lately, hey are based on what I feel I need to do for my boys and also for myself. I'd be disappointed if I didn't get this off my chest now. As mentioned, this isn't mass exposure, there are just a handful of people who deserve to know. All of her friends are gone to me and NC I don't care what they think, if they can't see what really happened, then more fool you. As I sit in the sun, halfway through our holiday, I've had plenty of time to reflect. First off, it's quite amusing sitting watching all the couples here at the resort. We came here before, as a complete family but not sure I really ever noticed or studied others. Everyone seems stressed, I'm relaxed and so are my boys. Well, kind of, my mother replaced the ex and she has slowly wound me up with her meddling and controlling. I know sons are meant to be loyal to their mothers but I have had to provide her with a few home truths. Not easy but look where putting up and shutting up got me in my marriage. I'm halfway through his needs, her needs and I must say, it all makes sense and I'm glad to say, on reflection, I was pretty good at meeting her needs as a priority. It all changed when she went off bonding, PND likely, and came to a head when she came out with the now infamous get a prostitute line. That was the moment I started to give up on her needs. Slowly but surely, the love bank emptied, as did hers and OM came along and filled hers up at work. Literally, I said in a very early post, I knew what I needed to do to save my marriage months ago and didn't do it. I'm at ease with that and know that I hold on to bad investments for too long. One to keep an eye on in future. For my next IC session, I'll be asking to focus on the reoccurrence of me not being able to communicate, be candid to those close to me until it's too late, or I let resentment build into a blowout. 
In La La Land, X is still in love and OBS tells me OM has been touchy-feely and showing incredible signs of remorse, zero signs of moving their divorce forward. Popcorn moments for her. Thing is, OBS is using OM remorse, see text from him a few pages back, to leverage financial agreement on her new house. Slight delay means completion next Friday. After that, she is telling him to get out and he will have no spare key to her and her kid's new house. At that point, OM has nothing, his kids hate him, wife is already dating others, he has to continue with my STBX. Plus, he's scared she, someone is going to tell their work, so it's blackmail, who blinks first. What a delightful situation. I won't be taking her back. Coms are only on divorce, so nearly no need for that soon, and kids, too much but a necessity. She is far too stubborn to even try and get me back, even if it went wrong with badly. After all, I wasn't showing her the constant affection and attention she needs, so she'll just find another man to hook onto instead. Saw her flirting with my neighbor's husband on the last drop-off. Clearly keeping plan B options open now she knows I'm not that option. I need to work on OBS, she isn't keen on work exposure but I'll get her there. They honestly think they've done nothing wrong because both marriages were unhappy. The texts from quite early on said stuff like, It hurts to think how I might never have met you. If we are together until death it won't be long enough. I've never felt love like it. The innate peace you bring me is overwhelming. Soulmates use too. I honestly think they are though. Problem is that his cheating nature will creep back in and then what? Bit odd that he is willing to take on stepdad of 4 and 7 year old given he has 14 and 16 to kids himself. This might be a line strung to ensure he gets his balls wet regularly. Tough day. Back from holiday where I spent 9 wonderful days and nights with my boys. Amazing bonding time. Great chat with 7 yo at beach bar one night about girlfriends. The new living arrangements and the OM classic. He is so emotionally intelligent for such a small boy. He said, how about I spend 1 million days with you at boy's house and then one day with mummy. I played the straight bat and said, it's important to spend time with your mother too. And breathe. Problem is, I'm back to work and the STBX has them now for a week. Drop off was heartbreaking. Hugs, tears, kisses from them. So hard to leave them. I feel empty without them. All the while the Poss is standing there in the doorway with a huge smug grin on her face as if to say, look at me, I'm so happy. Shame about her bingo wings growing each time I see her, her pot belly sticking out and being dressed like a tramp. And breathe. Then the anger starts, how could she do this, reduce the time I see my sons by 50%, stop me seeing them grow up every day. It's so unfair. Add to that the OM raising them in my absence and I can feel myself losing it. My birthday today and I am surprised how it has impacted me. Boys are with STBX this week, I am having dinner with them later but I am upset that they weren't there this morning when I woke up, to give me hugs, open cards etc. In fact, not had, heard anything from them. Can me building a new life, without the ex, possibly compensate that loss of time with my kids? I highly doubt it. It's these feelings that lead me to wondering about R. I read on another thread here, about R, that the husband knew this was completely out of character of his wife. And that he knew that, if he stopped the 180 and engaged in conversation with her, that she would engage. I believe they successfully are I have a similar feeling right now. 180 divided by NC has been 99% hard line. She is stubborn. Won't show her true feelings to me. I'm convinced she is doing the 180 too. So if I broke down the ice between us, I might just get to see what she is really thinking. If that is I am in love with OM, soulmate, unicorns then great. I've heard it from her first hand. I also still have that need to tell her the truth about the OM too. It's not KISA. It's stopping this guy being in the boy's life for a few months then screw off when he finds his next co-worker to groom. I'd regret it if I didn't tell her the facts, even if she is likely to dismiss them as me being bitter, revenge-seeking, at least she can be wary of his bull. I'm glad days like this are fewer and further between than they used to be but my brain races when they arrive and it's difficult to slow it down. Had lovely dinner with boys, then dropped them back to X, who incidentally was dressed like a tramp. Didn't engage beyond updating her on boys' days. Then she pulls out three presents and a card from the boys. So, I'm sitting here with a very expensive whiskey, hitting Bumble and Tinder, both on fire, but still wondering what if. I know the evidence points to a broken person but this is so out of character. I just don't think this is the real her. Yes, we were both crap at meeting each other's needs in the past years but she never showed any sign of this. Insecurity yes but cheating. No, I truly believe this is a MLC, pre-menopause situation. If I didn't investigate, I'd feel regret. That said, I do realize that I can carry on as I am and if she does snap out of it, I can choose to consider her at that point. Perhaps it is just birthday blues. I'll sleep on it. Tomorrow is a new day. Divorce is very close but it's the only weapon I have against OM meeting my boys, so I'm in no rush. Thing is I do see and hear signs. She searches for me on FB every day. She has recently started to tell friends that I'm a good man but we didn't make each other happy. She makes excuses to message me. In fact, she texted me today to wish me happy birthday and bought gifts from boys. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am better off not getting sucked back in. It would be for the kids if did anything. That might not be a good enough reason. 
I don't know about a fair cooling off though. Neither of them has a fallback now. In the past, the OMW put up with it for the sake of the kids but not this time. She threw him out. Plus, they still have thrill of it being a secret at work. Deep down, I do hope I am over the fear, disappointment of what this will do, has done to my kids before she comes back but today, it's difficult. The dating app's fun last night reminded me of the potential that is out there and I shouldn't have to accept second best, no matter how good my intentions for R would be, my children. As long as I can be the one sane parent, I know the boys will be okay and, in time, I fully expect to find a new, better woman who will be happy to have them in her life, at the appropriate time. At call from solicitor this morning, the very final legal document is complete and submitted to court today for approval. So, if I want to give up the control of divorce being when OM can meet kids, I can be divorced in four-fifth weeks' time. One thing that made me shake my head in disbelief was the ex's letter to my solicitor explaining why she is declaring zero cash in her assets. After mediation showing she had 7,000 plus, apparently this is due to the fact she has been providing me with sufficient funds to ensure the boys are comfortable in my home. She pays her half of the mortgage, her car loan and half of the boys' childcare fees. The amount she sends doesn't even fully cover this but I wasn't going to rock the boat, that's it. And she earns two times what I do. What a witch putting that on a legal document as a reply. I know for a fact she spent Easter weekend away with OM in a beach hut that costs 690 for two nights. Yup, all about the children isn't it dearest piece of crap X. So, just in case, prepare me for when the X does start to play the mind games or a potential return, remorse, still not expecting it but good to be aware. Is it as simple as keeping 180 divided by NC going? Counselor absolutely doesn't want me to try for R I don't want the X back. I'm already in limbo, if I apply for final divorce, that opens the window for OM to move in with X and kids, as that is what was agreed in mediation. Well, we agreed to discuss it then, I'm sure X takes it as she can do it. She, yes, female, has actually made me see that this relationship had run its course a long time ago, me holding on to a bad thing too long for wrong reason, but fully understands why I don't want OM near kids. Given that in her knowing how I still require a degree of control here, is suggesting that I can achieve that by softening my approach with X. I don't need to be nice I just need to open a communication channel that serves me a purpose. The way I see it, after all, in X's eyes I am still the evil man here. All she sees me as is the X who is bitter, trying to break them up and therefore, I am actually pushing them closer together. If she doesn't see me as a threat but still firmly understands I'm doing great and will never be a plan B, I can co-parent more comfortably. Without the defensive and untrue assumptions she is making that I am not moving on, and bitter, twisted and just out to cause revenge. Now, I know that is a risk and totally agree that an insane cheater still in limerence could use it to boost her ego. She could also react by understanding where I am at concern for kids, no concern at all for her doomed relationship with her boss. Incidentally, the IC, like many of you, categorically believes their affair is doomed and laughs at my suggestion of how serious they are. We do work on me, I specifically asked about this topic today. In terms of how this impacts D, all is done, the documents are signed and sent, it's all over bar the court stamp and that is a formality. No risk here. This is about protecting my boys and making it clear exactly why OM has always been an OM. So, what has happened in the last week? In summary, I did notify the STBX about OM's past infidelities, the risk posed by them sneaking around at work and him still sleeping with his wife while dating my wife. I asked if she wanted the letter and she did, so handed her a written, sealed note. She opened it that evening and, of course, showed OM who challenged the facts and timings. FB Snoop Info The next day, apparently OM told his boss about their relationship but I am under no illusions that this won't be the truth but rather that they only just fell for each other, but at least they took some action. No surprise here, X wrote a note back to me, which I received setting, saying it was inaccurate and a shame I believed the lies. Plus a few digs on happiness, refusing to take his kids' old toys he gave to them away but ending by saying, no introductions until I am content. Then I did some further FB snooping and found out that OM had posted me a hard-hitting letter, which is expected to arrive today, Tuesday. So, I went on front foot, told X I wasn't surprised at her response, reiterated my intentions were all to do with protecting boys in case OM only hung around for a few months, told her that I felt a weight off my shoulders for telling her the truth and that we should all draw a line under this and move on. Well, that caused a bit of confusion and panic in unicorn land. Long story short, with a large amount of support from OMW, who cleverly told him that I have all the evidence to tell their work the real truth and if he was up to something, that he should call it off. Well, yesterday, he decided to text me, again, saying he was angry and had to respond to me, to correct key points of the letter. He wanted me to take that into consideration when reading the content of the letter. He agreed that it is best to draw a line and apologize for causing me pain and sadness. So, I did text him back, telling him I too was angry that he took my wife and 50% of time with my kids, that it must have been uncomfortable for him. Me dragging up his past and, in context of being the bigger man here and striking a blow for swallowing pride, 
I said I wouldn't actually open the letter at all. Dramatic few days, I know 95% of you thought the letter was a bad idea but I feel 100% better for it. I made it clear to STBX that I am returning to NC aside from kids, final divorce proceedings and that she should expect things to be quiet and stable for the next few months. If it isn't, then exposure of the truth still remains the option but OMW needs his salary to secure a new mortgage, so we will likely hold off for a couple of months, and who knows, I might not even care then. I also followed up a few of my dating matches last week to have a drink with three different women and one of them, there was an instant spark. She is pretty much the opposite of my ex, which wasn't intentional but we've had three dates in the last week. Maybe it's because I've been in a bad marriage for so long but she is so caring, thoughtful, loving, excited to see and hear from me, it's incredible. She's a 90-minute drive from me, which isn't ideal but could work well, given I have boys and still want my independence, which she knows. The level of openness and honesty between us is the biggest draw. I feel she is an open book with no secrets. Whatever happens in the long term with this new woman, she has already added a tremendous amount of value to my life and my mind. It's also allowed me to assess what the STBX is feeling and I understand her desire to introduce the OM and integrate the children. Why wouldn't you want to do this when you have strong feelings for someone? Still doesn't make the timing correct or the underhand interference, such as giving my boys OM kids old toys and refusing to take them away, even though they both knew how distressing this was for me and OMW, right but good to understand, nonetheless. I guess it does show that dating is important in the recovery from infidelity, but only when you feel ready in yourself and only if you are upfront and honest about your situation, intentions. My comment, would you recommend OP going into dating right now? This was longer than I expected and part 4 ending will come out tomorrow morning. I believe OP is on the right track, but we will find out in the final ending.